Greetings from the Eccentric Man, and in this video we look at Lion Rampant 2. I've been waiting some time for the rules to come out. I didn't play the first edition, waited for the second. Let's have a look at what we get and a battle report too. As always, the Eccentric Man YouTube channel is kindly sponsored by Last Night Games and Stevenage. Check him out for all your gaming goodies and join us there. Lion Rampant 2, uh, another of Daniel Massey's uh, War Games rules, and follows very much in the similar fashion. Uh, based on activation of units, and the second edition has had a little change around with it. Uh, units again are based in units of 12 and 6, and slightly different to some of the other ones that I've played, like uh, Rebels and Patriots and Men Who Would Be King. But let's have a little look at the basic core mechanics and how we go about it. The book sets out some starter armies that you can use, and they're 24 points. This is the Norse one that I'm going to be using in the battle report that's coming up. And it's 24 points. You've got two elite infantry units at six points each, two heavy infantry units at four points each, and one warrior infantry at four points. They all have different starters stats and they're all different for their action activations and we'll look at the setup for the units and that will give you your information about how the units will work here's the heavy cavalry uh, information so six unit six figures in the unit the left hand column is the activation test you use 2d6 and you have to pass that so five plus to attack five plus to move shoot these don't Courage is 4 plus for your morale tests. Armour is 3. So, let's have a look at what the armour means. The armour means that uh, you need 3 hits to kill 1 man. The right hand table is the points value of the unit. It then gives you your attack value if you charge. Then your defence value if you are facing the charge. Shooting value... And then you're looking at the additional bits of information in there. So that really relates to what the special rules are. And in this case, the special rules is countercharge. You can pay extra points to upgrade your unit, though. The infantry profile runs much the same as the cavalry. It gives you all the information you need. Heavy infantry, you can see there, the attack value is 5, defence value 4. So they are better in defence at attacking, if you see what I mean. Moving on to the archers, you can see we get a shoot activation on 6+. plus. And we've got a shoot value, so that's 5s to hit and 18 inch range. Uh, difference in ranges and terrain give a bonus to the armour of the unit that you're firing at. If a unit takes casualties, there's a courage test. And that is cumulative as the game goes on. So you may get a minus 1 for 1 casualty in your first turn, take 2 casualties in the next, and that's minus 3. So it builds up the effect on your unit. There are 16 scenarios in the book, so that's quite a, quite a number to work your way through just to, to, to play around with. And it comes with a campaign system as well. We're going to play uh, Sausages with Mustard, and we're going to set the board up as it says. You get a little uh, layout to show you where your setups are on the uh, scenarios. So in this scenario, the attacker has got to destroy the four objectives in the centre of the board. And you can see that there's four set up around the centre. Uh, we've got the little uh, building, we've got two standing stones, and we've got a set of little vines or hops or something like that. Mm. So that's what the attacker's got to destroy, all four. So here's the uh, Viking army. I'm in the process of changing it to Victrix models from Gripping Beast. And we've got two units of uh, elite, six six figures, two units of heavy infantry, eight figures, and one unit of warrior infantry at the back. So warrior infantry at the back, harder hitting, but easier to kill. If you look to the left, you can see that I've put my main boss man on a bigger base than the others, just to make it easier to see him. Here's Martin's Normans. He's upgraded some of the units, the elite cavalry at the front. They've been upgraded to fearsome and also to make them easier to activate. And then the archers at the back are veterans and they shoot and hit on a 4 plus instead of 5 plus. Then we've got two units of heavy infantry, and that was Martin's. So here's the table set up for our first turn, and uh, we start on opposite sides of the table, so Martin is on the east, 
and I am on the west with my Vikings and Martin gets to set up one unit of four points in the center deployment zone. So he set up his uh, unit of warriors, in uh, heavy infantry in the, the middle and uh, that was it. I'll be advancing from the right of this photo and I'm going to split my unit to have uh, a heavy, the warriors and the elite on the top half and the elite and the heavy on the bottom half and then we're going to sort of do a pincer move but I'm going to use the warriors because they move at eight to go more quickly up the table hopefully to get to the bridge before Martin can get his crossbowmen and his warriors up because Martin is going to bring on his warriors and his crossbowmen at the top heavy infantry and his cavalry are going to come from the bottom left corner and speed towards the bridge to support his heavy infantry in the middle so we shall see how this all pans out and let's move into the first turn. So into turn one and uh, these ones went forward but the first unit I tried to activate was the Warriors and they failed uh, so everything else gets a plus one in our rules. Elites have moved up with the Lit Warlord again the other elites have moved up on this flank of the river and some heavy Warriors over on this side. Uh, Martin had much the same uh, success with his uh, activation rolls his heavy infantry have moved forward, but his archers failed. Over on the far flank, his uh, commander passed his, ex his test and activated and moved forward. But the guys in the centre defending, uh, they failed their test, so they didn't uh, move forward at all. So, end of turn. So, everything for the Vikings, all my Vikings, uh, moved forward. So, that was good. Everything passed their activation test and are moving up. We've got the two heavy warriors on the flank, elites in the centre with the warriors trying to catch up now. Um, Martin with his dice you failed the activation test for the heavy infantry in the middle. Passed it with these ones on this flank, so they're moving up. But for the second turn, the archers failed their activation test. They're not very happy, they don't want to be there today. But the uh, commander on the far side has moved up quite happily. And nearly to the centre of the table. Probably in the next move. Viking turn three, and we've advanced everything up. All, uh, all moved on their activations, which is good. The, uh, the Norman Knights have moved forward. One's in the middle of just standing there, and the other two units have advanced up. So they're starting to move as well. So uh, we're getting towards a bit of a bit of combat, so into turn four. So Viking, turn four, and the warriors fail to activate. The heavy warriors are pushing up on the right, and in the centre with the elites, they're all okay. Move the uh, elites up to the uh, centre here, hiding behind the rocks for the moment, and the heavy warriors over here. Norman knights have uh, pushed forward, probably just within 10 inch charge range for the next turn. And the centre heavy infantry has moved across over the bridge. And uh, front heavy infantry failed their activation, but the archers behind them moved up. So getting close to a little bit of fisticuffs, I think, coming up next. So end of turn five. And we've got one unit getting uh, close to the... Uh, on, well, getting to the objective on that side. This unit's slightly short. The uh, centre unit there failed its activation. The knights are moving across the bridge. And my uh, troops over here went into Wall of Spears because the cavalry were close. Uh, warriors are still moving up. Heavy infantry on the flank still going strong. And the two units of uh, infantry over there, the heavy infantry and the bowmen are moving up as well. So moving into turn six. First blood to Martin and his Norman uh, army. And he's uh, taken a casualty because the heavy infantry moved out the way of the archers. They both passed their activations and Martin shot with his bowman and took out one of the Vikings. Passed the courage test. Over here I uh, sort of stopped with the elites and I think failed with the um, warriors. The elites over here failed their activation uh, test to uh, 
check the, well, to destroy the uh, standing stone. And this unit over here have uh, moved up. So that was turn six, I think, turn five. It could be turn five, turn. Yeah. we could be going into six now. So let's see what the Vikings can do in response. A turn of failed activations for, uh, for me. The, um, the unit of Elite failed. They only needed a, a five. Well, no, they actually needed a bit more than that because uh, this unit over here, which I was going to charge into the Norman heavy infantry, they failed their activation. Uh, and then the Warriors over here failed their activation. The Elite unit failed their activation. These failed the uh, roll to uh, destroy the uh, standing stone. And this unit did actually manage to move up. But Martin's cavalry failed to uh, activate to charge the warriors behind them. The bowmen failed to activate to fire at the heavy infantry. The heavy infantry failed their activation to get into uh, war spears. Um, and Martin kept these ones in a wall of spears. <laughs> so that was a pretty, uh, pretty uneventful in action terms turn. Norman Cavalry has passed its activation and is going to charge into <laughs> charge into the uh, the heavy infantry. We'll uh, we'll see how this goes. That's uh, something different. I've not uh, faced this before. Quite a bloody little um, attack that one. So we've lost two of the Norman knights, but I've lost three of the heavy infantry. The Norman knights have fearsome, so I've got to do a courage test, so is Martin. But my courage test is going to be at a minus one, so I'm going to be minus four. Uh, so, and Martin's is going to be... So you've got three plus, but you're minus two. Yeah. And mine is four plus. Minus four. Now uh, that was a difficult turn for the Normans. Over here, uh, a bad courage roll of uh, double one saw the Norman heavy infantry retreat and go and run away in fact. Uh, over on the other flank, the Norman cavalry charged in and unfortunately, uh, although they killed three of the uh, Heavy infantry, as you uh, as you saw, uh, the courage test was failed by the Norman knights, even with the uh, the main boss there, uh, and they've gone back. Maybe not. Maybe not. Because it's a courage test, isn't it? Mm. Does he give plus one to his own unit? Yes. I know he gives it to other units. Uh, does the main guy give a plus one to his own unit, John? Brutus. Yes. Yeah. So that means they stay. They do stay. Yeah. So he's on a three because it, you you were on a you rolled four, down two, up one to three, and their courage is three. Yes. So um, yeah, they're they're this you hold. I'm not battered. You're not battered, no. So I. Yeah, we forgot. Uh, we forgot that the uh, the main man gives a plus one to the courage test. Hmm. So that was. Uh, oh, thank you for that. Thought, yeah, yeah. So the Norman heavy infantry decided to break its wall of spears and attack the Vikings. We lost two casualties in this one, plus three from the previous uh, shooting and chargings. And that took us down to minus five on our courage test, and we failed. So we've gone back three inches, and we are battered. Um, Martin passed his courage test on those, but in the preceding bit, the archers failed their activation test, and also the... Uh, Knights failed their activation test. 
but I did put the spearmen, well, the uh, Viking spearmen, into uh, a wall of wall of spears. So um, yes. Uh, over here we've uh, burned down one of the uh, objectives, and over here we're trying to burn down the second. Uh, we had moved that, that uh, Viking unit to try and do the other one, but they've uh, now got a bit battered now, so uh, we'll see what we can do in the next turn. Uh, we're going to try and sort out those knights, I think, at some stage. So, uh, a change of favour over on this side. We've we lost one man to the uh, the bowman, and we failed our courage test, so we've uh, retreated and got a battered market. Uh, Martin's put this unit into two, uh, wall of spears. I've moved me uh, warriors up into the rough ground. We uh, we didn't set fire to the vines. This unit failed their activation test. They're quite happy lock, watching the fire. And the wall of spears put the cavalry off and uh, his lordship has decided to go back over the bridge. So uh, we move into the next turn. So, uh, interesting. One, one unit moved, yeah. Yeah, your warriors. And one, one. So, the, uh, the bowmen failed to activate. My battered unit uh, failed their courage test and lost a man, so they're now down at half strength and uh, still retreating. I've moved the warriors up through the, uh, the rough ground and we failed to set the vines alight. The elite unit are still watching the flames. I've put uh, the unit over here into shield water spears before and uh, they were just trying to move and they failed their activation and the cavalry failed their activation too so it was a, a little bit of a, a no-go this turn now we're moving into uh, the next phase let's see if we can get some action so this is this is going to be quite crucial the uh, the knights and the lord charged him i've killed two knights and martin has killed three of my infantry i am however now on minus six infantrymen Plus one for yeah. you being fearsome. fearsome. So I'm at minus seven for my test. And I'm at now minus Martin is a minus four for your test. But my leader gives me up one, so minus three. And I'm not within twelve of mine. Yes. <coughs> yeah. So I need an awfully big roll, which I am sure is not going to be sufficient. Ten, Ten minus seven, seven takes me to three. And I need a four. Yeah. But oh, that's, so I'm only going to be. I'm only going to go back. One. Yeah, battered and. Uh, test. Yeah. Zero or lower. Nope. Yeah. So uh, I'm. You lose uh, half. Uh, no. Zero or lower. Yeah, but I haven't. I've rolled ten. Yeah. Less seven. Take me to three. Test is four. So I've just failed the courage test, so. Yep, yeah, but I'm not minus. I'm not below zero. So if they were below zero, I'd have to re go. But we're, uh, we're one, so um, we're three. So three makes us above. You become battered and retreat. Yep, so we come battered and retreat. And you um, got to take your test. Yeah. So I can move out of the way. <laughs> yeah, so Martin, uh, Martin takes oh, his test at minus four, one, two, three, and four, he yeah. has passed it on a seven. So uh, that took them down to four for their leadership, uh, three for their leadership, and they are three. But his big man puts a one in, so they were well in there with a four. So I'm going to go back with a batter. So a big hit uh, on the two. Knights remaining, we killed, well enough hits to do three, and Martin uh, didn't do enough to do one on the, uh, the elite infantry. So I think that takes it down to, um, you've lost half your troops now haven't you, with that? I, uh, I thought it was just for the, uh, the attackers. I'm the not side. sure, so we're going to have to have to have a quick look at the uh, Scenario victory conditions. 
so we had a quick look at the uh, scenario rules, and the half unit doesn't affect the defenders. So the defenders are still in with a shout, but I've now got to uh, destroy one more uh, of the objectives, and uh, um, well, like, it's it's keep going until the four objectives, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, keep going until four objectives. So we might be here for a little bit bit longer. Remember that uh, the units should have taken the courage test for losing the Lord. So uh, with Martin's uh, dice this evening, both of them have failed their courage tests and are retreating uh, battered. So that's uh, has been a little bit of a help to myself there. <laughs> How the cookie crumbles. Uh, had to do a battered test for these lads here at minus six and they failed, so uh, they failed very badly uh, on a zero. So that means that they flee the battlefield, which leaves me with six, uh, two six point units. So that's 12 points, and that's me at half strength. Yeah. So Martin wins by, <laughs> by default, <laughs> by the skin of his teeth, with two battered with two units. Battered units. <laughs> Uh, my guys uh, have thought, oh no, we better go, even though we have uh, burned two. But anyway, that's the game, so uh, thank you very much, Martin, a good bit of uh, fun there. And, uh, it yeah, was good learning. Good learning game, Our, well, my second line rampant, and Martin's first in uh, second edition. Or even yeah. first, so you haven't played first, play first edition either, yeah. so uh, yeah, so learning it as we go along, so yeah, a good bit of fun. As with everything, you really should read the scenarios. So there was a little uh, something in the back of my mind, so check the scenario rules, and it just meant that the game ended on either getting rid of the four objectives or if the attacker's strength goes down to half. So then you added up how many of the objectives you destroyed and how many were not destroyed. And it worked out that it was two points for each objective destroyed and two points for each objective that remained. So in the end, it was a draw. As with everything, my plan of sending the warrior infantry who moved at eight inches a turn up the middle more quickly didn't work with a failed activation right from the get-go and then some failed activations further on in the game. Uh, Martin, well, he was a bit hampered with his uh, activations role as well for the crossbowman on the f top flank. Um, yeah, interesting game. I I think, as, a, as I say, it was uh, my second game. And, yeah, enjoying the rules. What we found is that the cumulative effect of your casualties on your morale test uh, does make a significant difference uh, in this set of rules. So you have to be careful with the numbers of ca casualties that you lose. But I think it reflects quite nicely the deterioration of a unit when it's in battle with the casualties that it takes. Another interesting bit is the difference differentiation between warriors and their attack and their defense bonuses and the heavy infantry heavy infantry better in defense uh, than an attack uh, whereas a warrior is better in attack than defense the little uh, amendments you can make to upgrade your warriors uh, or any of your infantry and your cavalry i think are nice little additions to tweak your warband so I think I'll be trying some of those in the future. I hope you enjoyed this little look at the rules and the battle report. And I've no doubt that there's going to be some more Lion Rampant battles coming up in the future. Anyway, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And hit that notification button. As I say, I'm always trying to get uh, videos up. But it seems like it's uh, moved to every two weeks at the moment. But we're going to see if we can uh, up it again and get it eat once each week. Anyway, take care and catch you next time.